Hello everybody. Uh, today I will demonstrate how we can integrate Redux Redux Toolkit and Redux Persist into our next JS app router app application. So this is a simple demo where we have two sibling components. So in order for them to communicate data, uh, we can use Redux. And currently it's actually doing that. So you'll notice I have two buttons here: login and logout. And when I click the status on the other component changes and they're doing it through Redux. So this is what we're going to build at least, or at least I'm going to show how to build. And if you want the shortcut version, you can just go to this repository. I will add it in the description. Uh, you will have the step-by-step -step of what to do in the readme. So let me first uh, show you what this application can do. And then I will show you how, how to build it. So the first functionality is simple integrating redux and the second functionality is how do we persist the state as well for example let's say i'm currently in the logged in state if i refresh it you will see that i stay in the logged in state if i log out you will see that i stay logged out so this is happening through redux persist and this functionality is particularly useful when you are handling authentication scenarios because you don't want your users to log in over and over again whenever they refresh the page so uh, let's get started so this is our page component let me zoom in a little bit to see to show you how it's working so this is our main page and here we have two child components auth updater and auth viewer so this is the auth updater component and this is the auth viewer component basically they are updating the state and viewing the state so this is our ultimate goal to do that the first thing that you have to do is you have to install three uh, dependencies and add uh, redux persist get redux and another one is redux toolkit you will get the comment here so redux toolkit react redux and redux persist i already have them installed so i'm not going to install them again uh, the second thing is uh, and by the way this is just a plain next.js application with the app router itself i have created a new folder called store here the first thing to create is uh, creating a piece of slice so a slice is basically a piece of what you want to store. So you want to store everything related to authentication, you create auth slice. Let's say you have a bunch of posts, you create a post slice. So whatever you want to store or communicate, you will create separate slices for them. So just for demonstration purpose, I am storing only the auth state here. Here you can see I am initializing the state, I am creating a, slide, a slice and this slice is coming from Redux Toolkit. So Redux Toolkit actually makes it easier to manage uh, or easier to handle these situations in a very concise way. So we are giving it a name, passing the initial state and we are defining the reducers here. We have only one reducers, we want to set the auth state, true or false, that's it. So that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is you will go create an index.ts file. So this is our actual store file. So a couple of things are happening here. Uh, first of all, uh, don't for now. Let's not. Let's say that you don't see, right? So this is pretty simple. Again, we have a store, we have reducer, we have middleware, and that's it, right? This is the plain setup for Redux without Redux persist. Okay, but if you want to do or if you want to add Redux persist, you have to add these pieces of code. Let me show you. So first, we define the config. Whitelist means which part of the state I'm, I want to store. For example, let's say I have another state here. So let's say I have username, right? But I don't want to store the username. Then in the whitelist, I will not add username, which means Redux persist will not store our username. So this is particularly useful when you are storing sensitive data. So let's say you don't want to store token or API token things then you will not add it in the whitelist that's as simple as that and in the root reducer uh, you are just passing the persist config with our original reducer which is our actually original slice so that's about it about this store from the store we are exporting two methods one is use app dispatch this is to update the store and another one is use app selector this is to select a piece of store i mean accessing the data Next part, uh, whenever we are using Redux, we have to wrap our whole application. 
and for that we are creating a provider here so this is our provider component this line is option optional these two lines these are only for redux persist so this is our plain provider and if you want to add redux persist you just add these two lines here so basically we are creating a higher order component that is taking the children and you are just wrapping your application here so one thing to note here why i am creating this redux provider separately the problem with app router is app router is by default rendering all of the pages on the server side but redux only works on the client side so with this provider whenever we need to pass any data between the components we need to add this provider to those specific components or that specific part of the application because we don't want to make our whole application by default client set rendered right because that beats the whole purpose of next.js app router so that's why i created this reusable provider and we will add it whenever we need it that's the idea so why do we add it if you go to our page you will see that i'm adding it to our uh, index page and here i'm adding this use client because otherwise it will not work as i said earlier redux only works on the client side so you add this here and now both of these components should have access to the redux store how do we see it you go to the app auth updater uh, i am accessing this function from what we exported from our store and in the button we can see that we can just dispatch a particular action to update the store similarly if you go to this auth viewer component you will see that we are using this use app selector to access a particular piece of the state in our case it is state dot auth dot off state where is this auth coming from if you go to the store you will see that we are storing this part of the store under the auth key that's why our code is state dot dot auth dot off state so that is how it's working and that is our final result so just a bit of caution uh, in this page we mark this as use client but let's say you want you don't want to make this page a client component then you can just create a child component let's say auth um, right and let's say you mark this part as use client and then move everything from here here basically everything let me just pull up everything here right and in your index page you can just call auth container and remove this use client from here so that's how you can do it as well so this way your page remains server side rendered but this component becomes a client side component now because next.js app router supports that so uh, that's it uh, feel free to check out the uh, github repository also i have my personal blog as well if you want to check that out uh, i have some other articles here for you as well that's about it uh, thank you so much for watching and if you want you can like subscribe whatever bye